Welcome to ML Podcasting episode five. Five. And we have our special guests here, F&D Films. There's supposed to be a drum roll. Oh, I forgot. There's supposed to be a drum roll, but oh well. F&D Films. Oh my gosh. We don't, we're not deserving of a drum roll. Yeah. We'll, we'll add it in post. <laughs> Just okay, gonna... anyhow. Hey. Um, Maybe a kazoo riff or something. That'd be cool. <laughs> Yeah, so why don't you guys, like, introduce yourselves individually? Uh, yeah, I'm Aaron. I'm Vinny. I'm Cooper. And, and it's, oh, go ahead. Keep going. Sorry. Oh, um, no, I was just going to say, together we're F and D. How it's combined. Like, yeah. <laughs> so if you guys don't know them, uh, they're from YouTube, F and D Films. They're, you know, kind of a big deal. I think that's probably the best way to describe them. Um, they have about, I think, 45 million views on both their channels, 46 million on, like, their second channel. Um, if you guys say, haven't... Oh, go ahead. I'd say we're D-list internet celebrities. <laughs> Idealist. <laughs> have you guys ever gotten, like, recognized? Yeah, it, it happens from time to time. From time to time. On the, uh, on the L's in Chicago on the trains sometimes. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> All right. Okay, so if you guys haven't listened to the podcast before, because I'm sure most of you are here for F&D, not me... Uh, <laughs> We're ML Podcasting. We're an arts and entertainment uh, podcast, first and foremost. But we usually, try to be an arts and entertainment. Yeah, usually we... Mostly devolves uh, into us rambling about whatever we feel like. Yeah, we usually get off subject, but we're going to try not to do that this week because, you know, uh, you're here to listen to F&D. So, we're now syndicated by iTunes, so you can go check us out. I said that, like, with an Australian accent. <laughs> go. You can go check us out at iTunes. Um, it's ML Podcasting. And uh, today's panelists are Morgan, Sup. Cody, I'm freaking out, uh, there's me, and then there's Nathaniel. That's what's good. And then along with F&D, obviously. And uh, so if you guys want to check out uh, their YouTube channels, you guys want to tell them what it is real quick, it's also linked in the show notes. So if they want to go into the show notes, they can also click the links, but you may as well tell them what it is. Cool, yeah. I mean, we got two ways to get there. It's either youtube.com backslash fronk2107, that's F-R-O-N-K 2107, or you could just do backslash F&D Films. Either will take you there. Yeah, so make sure to go check out their stuff. It's totally worth it. Um, okay, so we're going to go into news real quick. We don't have a whole lot this week. This is uh, news for the podcast, and that is we just finally got our uh, full domain that I ordered off Blogger, so now our... <laughs> Blog with is powered by card. Blogger. Yeah, with Morgan's credit card. We got ml-podcasting.com. So now you don't have to go to blogspot.com. Blogspot I think I just, I heard, think myself. I just heard myself. Nathaniel, oh, is, that Nathaniel is that you? Yeah, hang on. Yeah, this is why we off. can't have nice things. <laughs> this is why we tried to get on way earlier than usual, so we wouldn't have these unprofessional you know, screw-ups <laughs> in front of our uh, I thought guests. this podcast was legit! Yeah, I know. We We're tried to fool you. We know. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we don't uh, have too much news. That's about it. So check us out at ml-podcasting.com, and you can listen to our other episodes if you haven't. Um, and then we're going to go into topics. And so uh, feel free to jump in at F&D anytime you want to put in your own opinion on whatever we have discussed. And number one is uh, Disney, if you haven't heard, bought out Lucasfilm. Uh, I think it was this past week. And last Tuesday, actually. Oh, uh, last Tuesday? Yeah. And so they slated a new film for 2015, a new Star Wars film. Um, actually, I think in this uh, article, they say there's actually going to be three more. And they're actually going to be based on, I guess, uh, scripts George Lucas had originally plotted out. I don't know if they were full screenplays or if he had just came up with ideas. But apparently, there's not too much doubt that it's going to be based on these. And so I just wanted to go around and ask everyone what their personal opinion on was, or what their personal opinion on this is, because I know personally, I thought it was actually a smart move on Lucasfilm, uh, because you know, the last trilogy, obviously, it was still uh, written by George Lucas, and if they stick with the same ideas, I'm still not sure how fans are going to react. Um, I I don't know what they're going to do. I think it would be cool, actually. Morgan and I discussed this if they actually got the original cast back together. I know. That would be... I was discussing it with my friends yesterday, and they all disagreed heartily. They thought it would be awful if they got the original cast back together. I think it would be hilarious. I mean, they'd have I to do it the great. right way, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, you could still get Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and uh, Harrison Ford back together. They're all still doing stuff. Of course, Mark what? Hamill mostly does voice acting. 
What about you, Nathaniel? I think he's kind of fat. <laughs> he's kind of fat, but I mean, he's been on like a few pounds. He's letting himself, Only he's he's let himself go. <laughs> yeah. And like the Princess Leia chick, she's also fat and like got cancer or something. Mark Hamill was like in a car crash, which is why he does voice acting. But I mean, <laughs> you could say it was some sort of saber accident. I know, right? All right, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff you could do. Although, if they do stick to the idea they were talking about in the article, I believe they say that um, it has to do with all new characters, which also would work. And uh, they're looking at different directors right now. Uh, some of the guys they have in mind are uh, Joss Whedon. Um, oh, yeah, that works for him. That's Joss Whedon, J.J. Uh, Abrams. Abrams. And, of course, I think they had Damon Lindelof as... Uh, one of the ideal writers for the new Star Wars series, which I wouldn't mind, although a lot of people did say he screwed up Prometheus, and he is, uh, you know, one of the primary writers behind Lost. So I don't know if there will be any solid conclusions, if there It'll are any mysteries. Base. So okay. we'll see what happens. I don't know. What do you guys think, F and D? Uh, on the idea of bringing, like, the cast back together, I think that'd be a hilarious parody, but, like, to yeah. do a whole movie <laughs> like that, I don't know, man. I think it'd be great if they were all fat and they had, like, hover cars that they... It was, like, Wally. Like, the new Jack <laughs> <laughs> They're all, like, lazy as shit, like... Talking about how easy these new Jedis have it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be funny. Uh, who, who initiated the deal, by the way? Was it, Lu was it George Lucas going, oh, I'm sick of doing this, so Disney can buy me out, and I just... We'll continue to not do anything. I just think yeah. Disney wants to own the world. Well, you so. know, I, was, that's actually... Was it, was it George Lucas who was like, Disney buy us? Or was Disney like, hey, George Lucas, let's buy you? I, I think it was uh, <laughs> probably prompted by Disney because I know for years George Lucas has kind of been like, you know, no one's going to get their mitts on my screenplay. And uh, so for years he said, you know, episode six is the end of it. There's going to be no more. It turns out he wrote, uh, you know, three other films and had it slated for like 12 films in the series. Oh my god. So it's I like have... how Alex Anonymous, like, no, I'm not going to do any more. And he's secretly yeah. writing in his <laughs> basement. <laughs> I wish that was my problem. <laughs> yeah, What's so it? like. Alex? <laughs> 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 Yeah, so like, uh, I think if they do get the cast back together, it should be more of a cameo sort of thing. Which, exactly. yeah, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, you're right. If they did do it just about, you know, old dudes, I don't think it would get too exciting. Um, so, I, I think I, it, like, I'm excited. A my, my name is Earl kind of thing. Like, Luke's totally let himself go and screwed up. And so and he has to go back and, like, fix everything he did wrong in the galaxy. <laughs> like, I don't know. Go back to the huts, pay him back. Because I don't think Han Solo ever paid the huts back. So, just stuff like that. But yeah, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, obviously a new story is in place. It's going to be, I guess, post-Empire. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, if you're excited for that, then you're excited for that. If you're not, then you're not. Reddit. Really not much more to say. Yeah, Reddit I actually got all this off Reddit. Up. Reddit was blowing up when it first happened. Oh, I'm and sure. Then, oh my gosh. And I'm like, everybody, settle down. Disney made the Avengers and Pirates of the Caribbean. I think when people heard Disney, they just automatically thought Princess Leia was going to be the next Disney princess who's going to be animated. <laughs> Can you imagine a Princess Leia doll? I, just Job of the Hutt, there with, animated. Oh my gosh. But yeah, anyhow, uh, we're going to go into the next thing. Unless you guys had something to say, sorry. Nah, we're good. Go. All right, so uh, number two, I didn't watch this, and I just got this news article together at the last second. If you guys haven't heard about Hurricane Sandy. In fact, we were just, you know, sitting through that last podcast in the middle of it. And actually, our uh, power went out for about 12 hours that night, right after we were We were sitting recorded. around with a crank radio. And we were Connor actually like... going through these uh, uh, questions we have for F&D later, like through, uh, we found this we old Trivial, trivial Pursuit. pursuit night. Yeah, we had this uh, game of Trivial Pursuit, and we we're looking through the questions. We're like, oh, these would be great to ask, like, F&D. <laughs> so, it's yeah. from, like, the 90s, so there are all these really obscure questions yeah They're so great. don't feel bad if you have no idea what the answer is we'll try to give you easier ones we're gonna be googling them over here so. yeah so you guys <laughs> yeah, there you go. all right we have so. 18 computers <laughs> we're ready <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh yeah hurricane sandy rolled through and uh it's like turmoil up in new york city in new jersey if you haven't seen it um, and there is a there was a telethon. I think it was last night, and they raised twenty three million. And let me check. Some of the people who were there was like Bruce Springsteen, uh, Sting. I don't know, Nathaniel. Did you watch any of that? 
No, I didn't, but I saw on Reddit Ben Stiller's been in, in Brooklyn, like, giving people food since, like, Tuesday. Just, like, he's, handing out he's stuff. He's got, like, a hot dog vendor stand, and he's just no, Ben he's Stiller like, with he's, a... They, they, they set up, like, trays of food, and he's, like, in a food line helping out, like, the yeah. people. Who, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so, like, yeah, so I, I guess he Ben should Stiller do is helping out. Only productive thing he's done in years. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last movie he did? <laughs> I think uh, Night at Museum. Right. Was no, did he direct Tower Heist? Oh no, not direct. No. Oh yeah, he was oh, in it. Yeah, his entire. Did he Tower direct Heist. it? I think he did actually. Tower Heist. No, I don't think he know. directed Tower Heist. He, the last he directed, I think, was Tropic Thunder. Oh okay, so I was off. Although he is doing that uh, web series right now. I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's like a parody of The Bachelor. Ooh. Yeah, and it's hilarious. Dude. Yeah, I watched like a begin so the beginning funny. of it. I'd still have to follow up on it, but yeah, what I saw was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, some of the people who are actually at this event were uh, Christina Aguilera, John Bon Jovi, Sting, uh, Billy Joel, Jimmy Fallon, Bruce Springsteen, Steve Tyler. Uh, so yeah, if you guys watch that, I don't know. I just threw it in there. I really don't have anything else to say about it. No, at least it's nice that people are, you know, like Stiller, they're actually helping out. I mean, aside from doing another We Are the World bullshit song. I know. Those. <laughs> I know. Oh <laughs> Which I'm sure actually is knock on wood still may happen, but who knows. Yeah. They'll... Change up the lyrics. There's a remix going. I don't know. Dubstep it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Make it interesting. When There'll the be another We Are the remix. World. Just give it a couple 30 years. Okay. <laughs> Um, a couple thirty. All right, so here's another thing that kind of broke my heart that came out recently, and uh, I'm not sure if you heard about this, Nathaniel. Um, I don't know if anybody actually knew that uh, the guys who did The Office um, were going to do a spinoff with Dwight Schrute, um, <laughs> and it was going to be called The Farm, and it was going to be the same sort of idea. It was going to be documentary what? style. It was going to be a mockumentary. They're going to follow uh, Dwight on his farm. And they were going to have, like, uh, family members uh, that Dwight always talked about, like, his, like, Nazi... His Nazi... His like, Nazi parents and, and uncles and stuff. And then he was going to have Moe's as, like, his, like, the side character. And it was going to be hilarious. In fact, he talked about it on... Uh, I think he talked about it on Conan or something. And then they filmed the pilot, and they just uh, got it to NBC, like, last week. And they showed it to them, but for whatever reason, NBC just, you know, blew it off. Either, either it really sucked or... They really didn't think they could make much money off it, but I mean, NBC has been in the tank for, I don't know, the last couple of years, so I don't know. I don't think it was a smart move on NBC's part, unless it really did suck or they thought it was being overplayed at this point. Um, but yes, the farm was uh, canceled, and so they actually are going to show the pilot, I think, as one of the final episodes of the season of this, uh, of this season of The Office, so look out for that. Um, but yeah, broke my heart. I don't know, Mine Morgan. Mine too, because The Office is my child. Yeah. So. <laughs> the Office was good for like the first couple seasons, but I just feel like it's the, these last yeah, couple. Yeah, the last. Yeah, the last couple, couple seasons. seasons. They're stretching it. Yeah, they are. They definitely are. I totally agree with that. They've gotten to the point where they're repeating storylines and stuff. But I thought this would be kind of a bold change, and I was kind of excited for this change because you'd finally be able to actually see the stuff uh, Dwight does, like he volunteers. Yeah, I really just wanted to see his Nazi deputy. family. Yeah, his Nazi family was exciting too, and I really wanted to see more Moe's. <laughs> Moe's. Um, although I will say this, The Office can still make me laugh, even though I think it's the characters have become, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, Kevin's a totally different character than he was before. They changed. Yeah, uh, they changed Oscar to just being the gay guy. Uh, it's kind of like what happened to Family Guy, you know, yeah. over the years. But um, I thought this would have been a change of pace for the show. Um, so I was excited for that, but obviously it's not happening now. So it's kind of a disappointment. But let's uh, move into our interview with the guys we have here. The moment you've all been waiting for. Yeah, the ones who are listening, the people you're actually here for, which is F and D. And uh, we're going to ask them a few questions. It's going to be kind of like a back-and-forth interview. I have a few typed up here. Nathaniel, uh, can you edit the doc? What a shot. Uh, the doc should be linked in Skype. Did you, guys, did you get it? Yeah, yeah, we got it right here. All right. So we have a few questions lined up here that I just kind of typed up last night. I'll probably add a few more or think of a few more as we're going through it. Anyhow, I'm going to start out uh, with this first question, which is... Uh, how did you guys 
start out and what really got you into film um, and are there any inspirations uh, that you guys have? Oh boy. Um, I think for all of us it was like kind of different startings but then like like Aaron and I we we met like in middle school so our kind of beginnings uh, collided quickly and then for Coop uh, we didn't meet him until college so he had a whole you know other background but um, I don't think we all story. Like, I mean, at least for me my, my personal I just always like being on camera um, I don't know I just, I'm a camera whore, I guess, from as a little kid. It really, like, my dad would have to make home movies, and I would be, like, waving to the camera, like, Hello, am I in there? Is I, am I in the shot? That's how I was, and that's how I still am. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about you, Aaron? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, we all started just making stuff, you know. Um, I got a VHS camera from my dad in fourth grade, and then it was just... Like, that's what really started it. Um, just a really strong desire to just make stuff. I think what fascinated me with, like, making movies so much is your ability to, like, you could do whatever you wanted. You know, it's not like, well, I guess it kind of is, like, if you were, like, a kid and you wanted to be a chef, like, that's the same <laughs> kind of thing. But, you know, like, in being able to present it to everybody, you know, just, like, shooting whatever, working your ass off, and then just like having like a screening and there's so many possibilities, you know, so much that can be done. And it was such an easy medium, you know, when you could just pick up the camera and go, that was what was the coolest. It wasn't about like props or like awesome costumes or sets. It was just you and your friends and doing parodies. You know, we did like new station parodies or, you know, we did a lot of parodies of the Blair Witch Project. Oh my God, we did so <laughs> Dude, it was like just every Saturday going into the woods and just running. Th we thought it was hilarious. Oh, like running through the woods Blair and then make like, fun of it. Uh. Now, Cooper, you obviously come from kind of a different background because you met them in college. Now, uh, did you guys, were you guys uh, all film majors or Cooper, where'd you kind of come in? Yeah, well, yeah, we all came in as film majors. I, I really didn't know... Uh, who these guys were at all. I didn't actually frequent YouTube very often, but like they were saying, at least early on, it was all, all just kind of making making films with our friends around town, and from there, my high, my high school had a uh, film program and, and got really into it. And then uh, at Columbia, I actually needed a place to stay my sophomore year, I think second semester, and we had some mutual friends that mentioned that these guys, these two guys had an open spot and I'd gone to like a party or something at their place, but I didn't know them at all. And then I moved in and it just coincidentally, we all are kind of into the same comedy and, you know, the same cause, I guess you could all say. did heavy drugs. Big time <laughs> drugs. Yep. Um, just worked out. Yeah, so. Yeah. I'm, was, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Matt. I, no, that was I that said time. to Coop, oh. I said, do you do, do you do the big H? And he said, yeah. And then we went to the bathroom. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want to call hockey. it. Whatever you want. Yeah. Say. Just destiny. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna insert myself in here. Yeah, because we kind of started out the same way. Uh, I mean, as siblings, Morgan and I. Uh, she had gotten this old uh, like digital camera. Digital blue. It's called a digital blue. I don't know if you guys remember this. It was kind it's of a cheapo toy camera. It had all these really great effects. Yeah, it had all these like uh, cheap children guy. features. Like you could add in explosions and stuff with like skateboarder the... dude. With the included software, them. and so, oh, that's cool. I mean, we were kind of, uh, I don't know if you want to say uh, pampered, but uh, we had all these effects that were already <laughs> built in to our software. Effects. You could put in, like, little skateboarders. Uh, that's a lovely looking camera. Yeah, these, they look like radar guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys looked them up? Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think it was probably, the quality was probably about, like, I don't know, 240 by awful 150 <laughs> something ridiculous it's like a barbie Pretty, video camera yeah, basically yeah so we used to run around and shoot stuff like that and then the batteries like exploded in the camera so we were restricted <laughs> to having the usb plugged into our uh computer and we had to and, like get it just perfectly in the seat yeah <laughs> and so uh yeah, we like it was like we had a six foot wire that connected from the computer to uh our camera and that was like the length you could go. So every we video was shot. in the living room and yeah. in the front hallway. It was in our living room. And we did all sorts of epics just within <laughs> that room. Three hour long 
It's not, yeah, it's not the effect. It's the story that counts, right? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we did, uh, we did everything from uh, stop motion to, you know, uh, 24, 24 parodies. Oh, gosh. Uh, we used to be Dude, a big fan of that. Um, we did music videos. Too, man. Those are, we did that, actually, my friends and I, we asked all of our, like, dates to prom via 24 parody. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was ridiculous. Yeah, so that's kind of how we started out, and then obviously we got sort of bigger. I eventually upgraded to a VHS camcorder, which was better than what I had, <laughs> and I could take it outside. And uh, we, that's when we started filming just our own personal stuff, and then finally I started writing scripts, and then now I'm finally up to a, uh, uh, a Canon DSLR, which is somewhat nice, but of course audio is an issue, but you know, you get past that. Anyhow, yeah. we're gonna move into the next question. Um, I'm curious as to like what films have you guys done that you're most proud of? None of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for me, I always say, I always mean it, Cheer Uppers, uh, which uh, if you guys saw that one, it was uh, this gr group of three dudes that go around cheering people up who are oh, feeling blue. Um, and I like that one the most because that we collaborated with our buddies, Ruby Dog Movies, our buddies Jake and John, uh, they, um, they had their own sketch group and, and we collabed with them. It was actually, I think it was Jake's idea and we wrote it together with him and shot it together with them and it was just nice to work with other people and have something turn out that we were all really happy with. I'm going to counter that and I like the, uh, the put downers, which is another, it's like a follow up sketch no. to the cheer uppers. But uh, same concept. That was just like there were like three different film groups that we had all you know where we'd all been friends and everybody was involved and uh, it was just a blast. And it was a beautiful crisp fall day. It was. Right. Right. <laughs> it was, fall day. It was. That was lovely. I just wanted to say that the cheer uppers was like our personal favorite. From like <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, put downers. Seriously, when that came came out. Oh my gosh, I was waiting for that. I just love that one. That was uh, we, almost, had, we had the idea like pretty soon after we made the cheer uppers, but I just don't think we like had our it was totally different. Remember we had the script written out and there was something about like one of the guys like lights like a box of kittens on fire and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> totally like cruel. And so like we reworked it and then one day we revisited it and just thought I mean because there was also the idea that John and Jake, you know, from Ruby Dog, they they moved away from Chicago too. So it kind of became and same with Greg and Bernardo, Jesus, man. All of our, <laughs> our friends are leaving and, and so it was kind of like, hey, let's get this done before everybody's gone type thing. Yeah. Hey, do you mind if I add someone to the call real quick? He's usually part of our panel. He usually makes makes our show what it is. I'm just going to add him in real quick. Go for it. Hopefully he's not heavily masticating into his microphone. Yeah, usually he's eating <clears throat> something. Hey, Luke. Hey. Hey, we're going to welcome Luke here. Oh, hello. Hey, Luke. Hey, Luke. Yeah, we hey. Have, uh, he just got back from work. But anyhow, we're in the middle of our interview, Luke. We just added you because we knew you'd make this more fun. You, oh, my God. There's a phone on my floor. Yeah? With somebody it's in your house? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Just pick it up. See who's there. All right. There Start calling people. Yeah. Get some people on the show, man. Get Alec uh, Baldwin. It's password protected. Password protected <laughs> phone? Yeah, like you have the weird little like slide the slide over all the oh, numbers yeah. and whatnot. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna move into our next question. Um, now this kind of segues from the last one. I know we've had this experience where uh, you do a film or any sort of artwork in general and you're editing it and you're ready to put it up and you're like, oh man, this is amazing. I can't wait to get this out. I love this. This is like my favorite thing we've ever done. And then you put it up and then you watch it a week later and you just can't stand it. And you're like, oh, why did I put that up? Why did I make that mistake in that, you know, part of the film here or there? Have you guys ever like regretted anything about like your films? I, per I personally wouldn't say like we've regretted anything like a whole piece, but there's definitely those parts of the movie because we're pretty strict on ourselves we've shot countless movies honestly like we've shot a lot of stuff that's gotten really far along even through editing and we just don't put it up because we don't think it's you know some of our best work we see too many flaws in it or we're not all happy with it usually just me because i'm an asshole <laughs> but, uh, 
you know, I think that like we have a really good thing going, and we know what we all like, and so like we all it's this kind of happy medium that we find where it's like, yeah, okay, this is good. Even though when looking back on it, you know, like you said, there's those little either there's a shot or like something in the sound or something where it's just like, oh, if I just had like another day or I. I went back and fixed that before we posted it, you know. We just had a time machine. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's things like that in every movie we've made, honestly. I've never, I mean, and I don't think anybody should be 100% happy with anything that <clears throat> anything that they make because there should always be something you want to improve on. You know? It's like, why are you making movies? <laughs> you, like, make a movie and you're like, it's perfect. I'm done. Yeah, exactly. Don't. Have you ever, like, had something so bad that you just wanted to, like, commit ritual suicide? As you watch it, it. totally. I mean, I mean, and say that it's like it's it's so true when you have friends helping you out and they're putting hours into a project that doesn't go anywhere. And then you just feel like the biggest you dick because you feel like an ass. <laughs> I don't know. It, you have to have that line. You know, you have to know. Have to I don't know set standards for yourself. Yeah, like your our friend sits around you know set for six hours wearing a dress and then you know two. Oh, <laughs> like, uh, well, I well, just kind of didn't I just make didn't it. Yeah, yeah. You were great, dude. But I don't know. <laughs> it's like Connor made me dress up as an old lady and play basketball, and yeah, we were shooting and that. We forever. never we never put that up, and we shot for like I don't know couple weeks i cut my hand open sneaking into that abandoned tire factory and everything too yeah we we snuck on to like uh we snuck on to a property that we weren't supposed to be on and uh we shot this film? entire final scene and there was like just horrible lighting and i got back to you know uh the editing room and i'm just like oh this is awful we can't actually you know finish this and then it just got put on hold forever and it just never went up um, I've also had things where, like, I'm working on a web series right now that I've been working on for years, and we're in the we're still in the writing process, and we've been working on it for so long, and uh, we've gone through we've trashed scripts before, and we're at the point where we want to film, but we just don't have the time, and uh, it kind of feels like your idea is going to waste, and you have to wait you know, like a couple years before you can actually get to work on it. So, yeah, we've had stuff like that before where we really want to do something and then uh, there's problems and stuff and you just, you know, you can't do it or just you have to wait before you can actually put it up. My, my, oh, sorry. No, yeah. go ahead. Like, my no, you... favorite thing is when you <laughs> spend, like, forever talking it up and telling people about it and they expect this great thing and then you show it to them. And it's terrible. Which has happened too before. Ni- and they're too nice to tell you that it's terrible. And then, like, two years later, you come back and you watch it and you want to shoot yourself. Yeah. You feel like you have to write a written apology to everyone who's seen it and have to lie to our faces about how, how good it was. Because <laughs> that's. That's not all right. <laughs> that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we'll go into our next question unless you guys have anything else to add. No. All right. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. We're just gonna cut you off then. Um, <laughs> you didn't have to cut them off. All right, Cody. Uh, <laughs> we we uh, kind of restricted ourselves. We're like, okay, unless somebody actually has something funny to say, do not be a hero and do not try to be funny around these guys because you guys are gonna come off really awkward. No, no, we're... dude. We don't give a shit. We're <laughs> about the same thing. Yeah, we so. we're, we don't. <laughs> Maybe to each other, but even then, I don't know. It's we still weird. Like... He watches it daily. <laughs> yeah, really we were watch. just like crowded around the laptop as Connor was about to call you. We were all about to puke. Yeah, we're all <laughs> like, oh, I gotta get to the bathroom. Gotta get to the bathroom. And then a little bit seeped out, but you guys came on and everything's good. Follow it back down. Exactly. <laughs> I've swallowed mouthfuls of vomit in my day. You gotta do it. The spot you can't. Let that go. Never let him see you vomit. Those vomit. two times, it wasn't even your vomit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you got to help a friend out and swallow his vomit. Right? Oh All right. You ever pooped like someone that. else's pants? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that actually happened uh, when I was in the Human Centipede uh, Part Three. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna go to the next question, and that is, oh, where do you, where do most of your ideas actually come from? 
Um, do you guys have like personal experiences or uh, have you ever been inspired by something you've seen? Uh, I'm just curious because I know like Cheer Upper seems like you got the idea of, you know, from like something off Nick Jr. like uh, the, the wiggles. wiggles or something similar to that. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone compared, yeah, cheer uppers to the Wiggles, and that I mean that's cool, but that wasn't even our intention. But it's, it, I think it's funny when people could find these other comparisons that we don't. I don't even remember where the inspiration for cheer. Well, like I said, the cheer uppers was actually Jake's idea, so yeah. we can't really take full credit for that one. But um, I don't know. Like it, I think anyone who's ever had been inspired by anything, I mean, I guess it's just life, and you. I don't know. You watch TV or commercial parodies, or you know, you have an awkward moment. And I think life is just a pretty big source of living. material. I mean, like, and that sounds stupid to say, but there's so much to just laugh at, like, just the way everything works, you know, like the like movies and the way people act towards each other and situations. I mean, it's really when you observational dissect observational comedy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. When you dissect stuff enough, it just starts to you start to really see it for what it is, and it's just. It's all kind of ridiculous, you know? And then sometimes, you know, we'll be thinking, you know, hard for, for an idea. And it's just, you know, when you really think too hard, it becomes real forced. So a lot of times the best ideas that we think we come up with are when we're not thinking of ideas at all. They just, you know, seem to pop up. And then it's like, okay, call. Let's call each other up and get together and try to write this. Yeah. All right. Simple enough. Um, okay, so you guys obviously, uh, I'm going to guess, have future aspirations in film. And, nope. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. We never did. dreamed of it. So um, what are some of your uh, hopes for maybe a career in film? What are some, uh, you know, what was something you'd want to go into? Would you want to go into maybe actually filmmaking itself or like editing or directing? I mean, what are your highest aspirations? I think all of us just want to make movies. I mean, one way or another. Um, right now we kind of all um, – we all basically take on all the jobs presented. For instance, uh, you know, anything that we've done in the past, Action World, you know, some of our bigger projects, all the sketches, even any commercial work that we do um, that comes around, we all write, we all take turns editing, we all direct. I mean, it's really like, I think we all love all the aspects so much that it's never like, it's never a question. I mean, if the opportunity presented itself, I think it's just to make movies. That's what we want to do. And if we can f make a living at that, like, I'll, my God, I'll be a PA the rest of my life. I don't care. You know, it's it's, it's that's what it's about being on set and in, a, in the editing room, wherever. And it's, there's something cool there. Um, that, but you couldn't just be a PA. Yeah. You'd have to be like a barista on the side Ooh, or something. That's <laughs> it. I am a barista, actually. The there you go. Yeah, there you go. So you have to do something. Aaron's been a PA for eight years. Hey, you don't years. know. You don't know. It could the, be, I could be the best paid PA. You're in gonna the be like that old roadie, but you're like an old yeah. PA. Don't call me the PA, dude. He is. That's the one. The one PA. No, I don't know. I just something in movies. You know, we want to make feature films. Punching is like kind of our. It's a short film that we worked on all this last October, this past month, and. It's a big passion project for us that we've been writing for a long time and we worked on for a while and it's that's our our step towards features I think and the next step would be you know a feature that we could you know distribute it's it's all about I, we've been fortunate enough to have a lot of people see our work so far you know we've kind of built this like cult like you know fan base <laughs> yeah and it's so huge to have people watch your stuff you know so so many people that's all they want are just people to view their work and like to just have that now and we just want to grow it you know we want to make bigger things and show people what we're capable of so yeah exactly because that's kind of like you know my hopes uh right now uh i have a f pretty small channel uh i don't really like the way youtube is set up now because it's harder for people to find me because you used to be able to go br browse channel see most subscribed and stuff and it's so hard i think for people to uh try to make it on youtube now who want to actually get into this i mean you usually have to go viral to really make it big and uh, I'm actually gonna segue into the next or into question number seven instead of six because it kind of relates to what we were talking about and we'll go back to six and uh, that's that you're currently working on a feature length uh, version of Punching which was uh, if you guys haven't seen it it's this uh, parody trailer they put out of like any almost like any Oscar award-winning film and um, <laughs> so I was just curious if you guys wanted to 
you don't have to, obviously, uh, if you want to shed any light on what to expect. Uh, well, it's um, it's only it's only a short film. It's oh, okay. going to be like thirty. We're hoping thirty to thirty to forty minutes, um, which is actually a weird spot for a short film to be because it's actually longer than most short films are. But uh, we this we wrote the script to that length and we like it. So, um, but yeah, that's like Aaron was saying. That's like our stepping stone into like bigger stuff. Um, you know, we had we had a budget for it and we tried to like you know, actually run a professional set with people doing different things. And it wasn't all just in the three of our hands. It was a lot of people, you know, we had like a production designer and costumes and, uh, yeah, that was, that was insane having, because every other sketch we've done has been for zero dollars or like, okay, let's take out like 50 bucks for this if need be. We're pretty stingy about it, but actually to have the, you know, ability to raise some cash was Pretty, pretty crazy. Thank you yeah, to honestly. all our fans yeah. from Indiegogo. Yeah, thanks to everyone that donated. Say that again, because I mean, our fans are really what what made the movie. You know, we wouldn't have had the funds to. We, <laughs> I mean, with all the money we raised, which we were unbelievably thankful for, we went even way over that. I mean, like I guess our aspirations were really big for this, and when it came time, when it was just like, yo, we don't have the money for this, we were just like, well, screw it. You know, like let's just. You know, let's spend what we have. You know, what's in our own pockets. So we we wanted to get it done so badly, and for everybody to believe in it and chip in that much, it was it was really cool to see. Especially all our friends. You know, we didn't pay our friends. You know, we fed them <laughs> like bagel pizza every day, <laughs> three meals of pizza every day. Yeah, yeah. It, was, no, it, was, yeah, it wasn't that bad. But there was one day where we had like all the meals. It's just like, well, let's order pizza again. It was pizza. It was <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you didn't like keep hot pockets around the house or anything. No, nah, I mean, is just ordering out because we were on location, so it's oh, uh, yeah. right. Explain it. I'm used to that. filming at our house, <laughs> <laughs> our prime location. Yeah, our sad little production company. <laughs> um, keep it up if you can do it. Um, yeah, so it was. Uh, I don't know what I was gonna say, so I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> All right. It yeah. was. It was a good experience. Yeah, exactly. That's one of my things. Uh, one day I want to be able to do some sort of, you know, close to feature length film. Uh, obviously, I'm going to start off smaller like you guys are. Um, but yeah, let's go into the next question. I'm going to go back to number six. Uh, you guys, I've read an interview with you before a few. Um, and that is, uh, you guys have actually done some ads for companies. Not all of them, I think, got through, but you guys did some work for them. I was just curious if you wanted to uh, maybe talk a little bit about some of the uh, companies you've done work for and stuff like that. Yeah, we actually, well, I, I used to work at an ad agency throughout college, kind of interning and doing some freelance work. And then from there, I was just kind of kept showing more and more videos that we'd make and people started kind of, you know, digging the, digging the comedy and the content. So kind of networking that around, they... Um, gave us a couple opportunities with with some brands to do some viral work and or some like internal videos um, but as far as that stuff goes um, it's it's pretty much in the early stages we're hoping to someday get some actual commercial work but for now it's all you know viral and internal type stuff all right yeah I just thought that was something interesting that I didn't know that I'd seen in one of your uh, interviews before okay so we'll go to the next one and I'm actually gonna skip eight because it's kind of repetitive um, unless you guys want to talk about that one. Oh, with those influences? Yeah, it's it's uh, what filmmakers and screenwriters have influenced you. Oh man. Oh, I really like uh, Mike Judge. He's great. <laughs> um, yeah. The, yeah he's hilarious. Any of the classics, I'd say. Uh, Scorsese, Spielberg, Home Brothers, Coppola, Dostky. Uh, uh, Dirt, uh, <laughs> Dostky. Um, <laughs> I think I, even yeah, even just I mean yeah, let's but let's you, honestly greats. my my huge one coming into school and everything was um uh <laughs> now that you forget <laughs> <laughs> who did uh uh fucking best in show oh Chris, 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 sorry I, mean, I just I just blank Christopher Guest is a huge influence who's the dude and that, now it doesn't even sound like it there's no <laughs> yeah, dude. who's the dude that directed um. Like Big Daddy and Doug Saving Dugan. Silverman, Doug, Doug Dugan. Dugan. <laughs> That's one one film we all kind of come together on. Big Daddy. Still time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Our right, family absolutely. all come together on is Max Keeble's big move. Oh, yeah, God, all no. of us. Max Keeble's big move. <laughs> it's a classic. Teaching with Jamie Kennedy, right? Is it, is, is he in that? Yeah. Jamie Kennedy? Yeah. Ice cream. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> all right, so... um. Jamie Kennedy's in that? <laughs> Isn't he the ice cream man in the very yeah, beginning? Yeah. That's right! <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Blow your mind. your mind. Hey, did you guys ever see that movie Little Monsters? Little Monsters. Yes. It sounds familiar. Uh, yes. You know what that's? The blue oh, monster yeah. is Howie Mandel. Yeah, we're <laughs> <Are you> serious? <laughs> where, where he pees in the uh, I... apple juice bottle. Apple juice bottle. Yeah, he pees in it. Oh, and he pees in oh. it. Yeah, <laughs> like the bully drinks it or something. That was one of those moments, too, where I was like, holy shit, that was him in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to uh, unless yeah. You know, Leo DiCaprio was in Titanic. We'll move on yeah, to the. Yeah, you know Leo in Titanic. We'll move on to the next question. Um, this is always I pick my brain about this because I've always been curious about this. I really don't know why. Um, who are some of like uh, the YouTubers you guys like to watch? Who are some of your favorite? Uh, there's a whole list. Uh, Good Neighbor stuff, Britannic, uh, oh, Magic, Magic Titanic. Bugs. Yeah. Um, Ruby Dog, Ruby our Dog. buddies. Yeah, our Born buddies. Ready Films. Born Ready Films. Picnic Face. Yeah, Picnic Face. Uh, Waverly Films are huge. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, blanking right now. Is it Pete and Brian? Pete and Nick? I forget the. I forget that duo. Um, <laughs> I forget I their names, it. but they put out some funny sketches. Sam I mean, son. there's. Oh yeah, Sam and his son. There's there's a lot of just those guys. What happened to those guys? <laughs> yeah. What happened to that? That was dude? Coop's short-lived YouTube <laughs> group with Bernardo. <laughs> um, Very short-lived. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, definitely up there though. Magic Hugs, Good Neighbor. Um, they man, they make some hilarious stuff. They're big inspirations. Um, would love to work with them someday. It's funny too because you'd have comedians like if you I've, we've been to a couple Q and A's and just hearing like people that we look up to hearing their inspirations about when they grew up and you know it was always back in the day it was like oh yeah watching people from TV shows or you know doing films and now like this day and age it's like a lot of inspirations are just right off of YouTube because you know not much stuff I mean there's stuff off of TV that's great to watch and it's hilarious but internet killed the TV stuff dude I'd say man especially sketch wise I don't know there's such a lack of good sketch on TV ever since like Mr. Show went off and <laughs> I don't know you gotta find all that on YouTube you know, I feel yeah it's hard man we actually just got to see uh, like Bob a, a speech yeah a Q&A with Bob Odenkirk and um, that was pretty freaking awesome but even <laughs> A dude like him who's hilarious, his resume's through the charts. He you know, he talks about how difficult it is to get sketch on TV and have something, you know, that resonates, you know, like Chappelle show or something. That's like a diamond in the rough. That's yeah. stuff like that's just hard to come by. Yeah. I mean I used to watch a bit of Portlandia. I don't watch a whole lot of sketch comedy. I know I should, because that's like what I'm into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I also have noticed if you wait really late till the night Go to one of those Christian channels. You'll find oh some God. great, like, independent sketch comedy stuff. And it's just awful. But it's pretty funny really? just because of how awful it is. In fact, we found this one. The it's Logan called Show? The Logan Show. And all I remember is we're flipping through the channels. We find it. And it's just this guy going around with, like, laser vision. I don't know how it got on the air. But it was it was pretty great. <laughs> it looked like something we did. Only- <laughs> Oh yeah! Like oh yeah! It was a magic mustache. He was like shooting lasers out of his mustache or something. Was that what it was? Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like killed a tornado. But yeah, it was some sketch comedy Christian show, and we we're just like, "What is this?" But I mean, it felt like you were tripping yeah. out, <laughs> tripping out on God. You know, there's a show <laughs> called Bible Man, right? Bible Man. Why don't you yeah. go into it, Luke? You're kind of our cult specialist. Bible Man is a show that you can find on TBN, the religious network that always has Pat Robertson. He's like, I want your money. My favorite. <laughs> Which is like, that's all he says. But um, it's on occasionally, and there's this kid, and he's just like going to school and crap, and there's like, he gets bullied, and then Bible Man comes to save the day. <laughs> and it plays like, you know, like your standard episode of like Smallville or something. Only, like, his superpowers all come from quoting Bible verses. Yeah, verses. scripture memorization. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine Bible Man dresses like Powdered Toast Man from Ren and Skimpy. 
and he's got a Bible for a head. Dude, it's so terrible to say, but just thinking about that, you guys saying that and how awful the content is, you know how easy it would probably be to get your content up on a channel like that if you just declared yourself as like a Christian sketch group exactly. and you like <laughs> Bible related sketches. Like we should do that, dude. We should yeah. do a sketch where we say like F and D's going Christian. <laughs> oh. and, like, do like a Christian. Wait, no, we're, we're we're not. Oh, that's right. No, we already. Do. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. would actually like like to get on one of those like weird Middle Eastern channels. You know where they had like <laughs> Farfer, who's like this uh, like uh, oh, Mickey terroristic Mouse Mickey Mouse. And the quality of those shows are just, you know, fantastic. And I would love to just, you know, hack in one day to, I don't even know if you want to say hack, but like <laughs> put in this old VHS tape into their station and just play your own stuff on these Middle Eastern channels just to see the reaction. You know, they'd probably end up burning a few consulates, but, you know. Going along okay. with uh, Bible Man, that reminds me of this personal anecdote that we always talk about of the little kid whose mom would not let him buy Grand Theft Auto, and instead he made, or his mom made him buy Bible Adventures. Please tell me you remember this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is just a personal story. We always throw in our own personal stories. I remember this because Cody told me. Yeah, there was this kid at GameStop or something. He was asking, like, to get Grand Theft Auto, and his mom's like, why don't you, why don't you get this? It was like... What was it like? Bible. No, yeah, Bible stories. It was like Noah's Adventures or yeah. something, and it kind of looked like uh, uh, Veggie Tales a bit. Anyhow, yeah. we're getting off subject, and it's not yeah. even. Try to load all the animals on the ark before the water rises above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love, I would love to see someone turn the Bible like into a gritty video game, <laughs> How like awesome. Grand Theft Auto <laughs> style. <laughs> like I said, wait, did you say Assassin's Creed style? I said Grand Theft Auto style, but that would be oh. even better. <laughs> Either or. Dude, that'd be fucking, that's a great idea. Yeah, right? <laughs> Don't test it. It'd be, really, it'd be really violent. Yeah, really brutal. You'd have to escape Sodom and Gomorrah, and you'd have to, like... You'd have to fucking summon locusts. you do, like, a David <laughs> battle. Think about how cool oh. that would be if you had, like, Goli like Shadow of the Colossus. Like, if you just made, like, him ob just obnoxiously big, and you had to, like, climb him, and he was, like, 70 stories high. <laughs> 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 Gotta, like, resist the apple. There's a sequel. <laughs> There, there'd be a sequel where you play as Jesus. No, no, no. Here we go. Here we go. Since I... At, at the beginning, like he said, like the announcer guy is like, he was killed and on the third day, he'll rise. And then you just see Jesus burst out of the tomb with two Uzis in hand. Oh, yeah, dude. Smoking a big J. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now, I got to throw this in because uh, I'm Mormon here. They got to have like a third party developer come out with like a... Uh, unofficial like, sequel, and it's like called yeah, it's like uh, it's called the Book of Mormon, and it's based on like <laughs> Joseph Smith and everything. You gotta like trek out west, and you gotta be oh, I'm gonna get into Mormon stuff here, but yeah, they could have like a third party developer come up with the Book of Mormon sequel. Get the plates. Yeah, That's right. find the. Dumb, I always dumb, thought they'd be a dumb, good dumb. Indiana Jones uh, premise. It'd be like, <laughs> he look for the, he's trying to find the cup, you know the the. What the hell was it? Holy the, Grail. The Holy, Holy Grail. Grail. He should try. It'd be Indiana Jones finds the, the magic plates. No, the golden the plates. Golden plates. Golden plates. Golden plates. Yeah. Asshole. You have no consideration yeah. for other people's religions. No, I don't. But don't worry. We're, we're here to school you. <laughs> yeah. So it's true. To add to that, if Harrison Ford teamed up with Nicolas Cage and did like a National Treasure Indiana, <laughs> that would be fantastic. Now we're talking business. Nicolas you know Cage, I mean? man, he he Nicolas could be Cage like a uh, Joseph Smith. Relation, oh. you know. No, he but no, he was Joseph already. Smith. Wouldn't he like, like? Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt would play Joseph. Smith. There you go. That would actually work. <laughs> there we are. That would be, that'd be phenomenal. All right, let's go into the next question, and that is. All right, so this is kind of a personal question because I'm interested, and I've seen uh, your vlog where you guys were shooting punching, and you guys got your hands on a uh, red camera. And I'm just kind of, okay. that kind of, you know, excites me. And I was just curious, how did you guys get your hands on that? So like, what's it like? About at night. What's it like working with one? Oh, dude, it's amazing working with one. I mean, they're, they're really cool. Um, we got it because we did some ad work that paid out really, really well last year. Um, and so I decided that my purchase for F&D was going to be a Scarlet. Because um, that was, it was weird right around the time that we had gotten, like, um, gotten paid then they were announcing the Scarlet and I've been waiting since they announced it in like 2008 so here four years later I'm just super jazzed about it I'm just like oh man like, super jazz uh, <laughs> just to hear you know how much and what it's going to be capable of and when it came out I just didn't want to pass it up and 
you know, it's it definitely was a crazy purchase, but it's one that, you know, that's that's a camera that's going to last us, I mean, for our careers, you know, if not the next at least 15 years, you know, we could you could be shooting stuff on that. Um, so after getting it, then we shot the trailer punching on it, but we didn't really do the workflow right. We were really learning it still. And then we just shot, we met up with a guy, um, this awesome, awesome guy, Pete Stepnoski, and then he came on board the punching film. Um, and then he had his own Scarlet. So we were running two cameras on that. It was just... That's great. It was awesome, man. It just makes everything... It makes all your mistakes go away. It makes it... <laughs> or it makes it look ten times worse. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, cut down on the day, like, in half. You know? Yeah, like, having two cameras cams, to shoot. Yeah. It was a godsend, but... <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's it's fun, but you got to know what you're doing, you know, because I wouldn't recommend it for just anybody. I mean, you got to have a passion to learn it and own your skills, and you got to be familiar with film. I mean, and a lot well, of hard drive space. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of space. A lot of people get in and they just love the auto feature on cameras, but you have to know what you're doing if you want to use one. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, that would be a worthwhile investment eventually, but I mean. I still have, I'm still trying to figure out my DSLR sometimes with Magic Lantern. Um, <laughs> anyhow, we're gonna go into the next question. Um, are there any ideas you guys uh, like have wanted to shoot and you just never had the resources to? Like, have you ever had like a story that you've always, you know, been developing that you've always wanted to get out there eventually, maybe in your future, uh, kind of like your dream film to make? Absolutely, I think. A lot of our stuff is like that. I, we, we're trying to make the stuff right now that we can work around with, like, like us being in it. But you know, eventually, I think we want to be able to like have a full cast of you know actors that aren't 21 years old because you know we have other stories to tell that don't call Zorg, for us. Oh, the Zorg I, the Zorg idea. Yeah, the Zorg First ideas movie. and bunnies. Bunnies, my God, yeah. I mean, there's there's. <laughs> we have no. What it, what it, bunnies was this um. When Aaron and I were, this was like when we were in fucking, how old were we? Sophomore year? So it's freshman, sophomore year of high school. We shot this, we had this idea called Bunnies, and it was ba it was like a Who Framed Roger Rabbit thing, where we find this book that was filled with uh, pictures of bunnies, but they were evil and they came to life, but they were still animation, so we were fighting these animations. Yeah, think of it like a Who Framed Roger Rabbit or Space Jam type, right. but like all violent you know so it's basically like a dawn of the dead meets space jam where like <laughs> <laughs> well we shot it that's the thing is we, we shot that we shot the movie and it was probably like what like 20 minutes maybe yeah i mean it just didn't go through and well, then the animators dropped out yeah these and... two stupid douches in new york <laughs> no they are they totally fucking stood us up like they're douchebags i'll say it on, on the where were, where were they from they, they said they were gonna do something and they didn't do it and that pissed us off yeah. so we, we wanted to revitalize it but it, we just kind of didn't do it you say they're from new york yes <laughs> there, there's your problem <laughs> they totally they should know what they did was wrong yeah you 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 guys they did just get hit with a hurricane so karma that's <laughs> <laughs> true too soon. Yeah, yeah, Luke, we were just talking about how great it was that these uh, guys were helping them out with this uh, charity concert, and you just had to ruin it, even though I insulted them too, but, you know, it's New York. They can take it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so, all right, we'll go into this next one, and it's our final question for you guys, and what do you think makes you so popular today? Why do you think you guys uh, have had uh, such a hit online? Uh, popularity is popularity is a funny thing. Um, I I I always like to consider that we have like a, a really nice like like a good fan base, and I don't want to like talk down about like how many people watch our movies, but um, I don't know. It's a hard thing to swallow. Like every time people say like, oh, you guys are like YouTube famous or you guys are celebrities, I never think about it that way because it's I just consider that we're just like some guys making like sketches for the internet, and so. I don't know to hear that like it just I always think like well that's too extreme like we're not like we're not super popular we're not like celebrities we're just you know we're just guys so I mean I don't know for the for the following that we do have I like to think that you know it's just our comedy is like relatable we got we you know found kind of this niche where a lot of people share our sense of humor we just well, we try to make what you know I guess we just make stuff from the heart you know you make what you want to make and you, you laugh at it genuinely and you're not doing it because you think other people are going to find it funny like 
I mean, of course that comes into play. But, I mean, what what's, comes first is like, hey, we like this. And then usually we'll actually YouTube the idea to see if anyone else has done it. <laughs> and then if we know our idea is semi-original or, you know, almost... Actually, no, I was going to say, like, originality is a huge thing for us. And if I had to peg anything, I'd say, like, I'd like to consider it that, you know, we try to put out the most original creative content that we can that nobody else is doing. And that, that to me, is like... I don't know. That's that's uh, something that I feel like. Yeah, just pretty simply. Yeah, I think just whatever whatever makes us laugh. You know, we we're just gonna do it. I guess. <laughs> I guess if it, you know, if it feels right, it totally feels right. And if if it's not feeling right, then you know, like we said earlier, we'll scrap a sketch, and you know, we we can all you know collectively agree on something that's just not not going so well. But oh, was, was oh, he, oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go. Was was. Full of like pop culture, like parodies. I mean, I guess, yeah, I don't know. Originality is just important to us, you know, like creating characters, creating new ideas and stuff that's not built on, you know, movies that are already made or TV shows that are already airing. So, and then with production value too, you know, we try to, you know, we've been doing this for a little while. So you just always, you got to walk that line between being a perfectionist and then knowing when, like, all right, this is as good as it's going to get. And, I mean, if you watch a YouTube video and it's like the first thing you see, it's like the video's real grainy and the sound's all crappy. Like people don't really, they're not going to stay tuned into that. So we try to, you know, keep our production value up and take that real seriously to keep people, you know, taking us seriously too. Yeah, just, yeah I just want to add something. Yeah, because today, you know, the people who make it on YouTube obviously really do have a passion for film. You'll notice that in just about every top YouTube channel. I mean, for the most part, other than like viral hits, but... I mean, for me, that's one of the things that I'm still working on, you know, trying to de find my own, you know, sort of style, trying to find my own, uh, you know, sense of humor, stuff like that. And I think it all factors into uh, getting this, you know, following. And um, for me, it's something that I'm still finding, but I think a lot of people can relate. And I think if you really do want to make it, you have to uh, find it for yourself and you have to have that quality about your about your stuff or else no one's going to watch you like you said and I think yeah. yeah I think Luke had some stuff he wanted to add I have a few questions I'm not sure if you're familiar with the show Inside the Actors Studio yes. yeah mm -hmm. okay uh, James Lipton asks a few questions uh, that were originally invented by uh, French television personality Bernard Pivot um, there are a few I'm going a few questions that he asked. I'm going to ask you three of them that are my favorites. Number one, what is your favorite curse word? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, I don't think shit. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> it's a combo. It's good. All right, it's good. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh man, I I had a. I had a passion for video games and still do. I, I'd always thought about, you know, be, being on the creative side of video games. I know that's not too drastically different, but I don't know. I'd, if we're going way different, um, maybe a chef. Oh, you in another fucker. You took me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we could be chefs together. I wanna, and I know this is, like, typical astronaut. You asshole. No, I'm <laughs> That's like an elementary schooler one, man. We don't go to the moon anymore. Because science. Well, my other answer for the longest time was uh was like a psychologist talking to people, but I I don't know. I don't want to do that. I can't I think I can't even I I don't understand sort out the thoughts in your own See, head. I can't even talk about it right now. I'm tripping over my own words, so you guys don't know, it's hard to take Vinny seriously right now. He has no sideburns and he has a mullet. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But astronaut <laughs> Science. Splint. Who does want those states? Fuck anyone who says they don't want those states. Last but not least, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Nice try, but you're going to hell. <laughs> no, that's not. Um, that's not, totally not what I want to hear him say. <laughs> uh, probably. Um, I guess I I guess I'll let you in. <laughs> I wish if I get there and I just want God to just I want to stare at him for a really long time in silence, and then he just like says, "Oop, there it is," and then, <laughs> and then it just doesn't stop. 
I'd want God. He would. He'd say, "Here's your laser tag gun." Then you're reading the list of rules for laser tag, and heaven's just a giant laser tag. <laughs> <laughs> but that would sound. He would sound like he's giving this speech like a thousand times, so he's not enthused. Yeah, he's like, "All right, so no running." Um, <laughs> back to the charging station. <laughs> don't block your sensor. That's cheating. <laughs> Either way, yeah, I don't know. Heaven is just a huge laser tag, right? Is that? What we're I mean, going that'd be after? that'd be for me. You know, everyone's got their own. I think heaven's like the eye of the beholder kind of thing, like your own idea of heaven. No, that I my, think I read somewhere that heaven is a laser. Yeah, tag. you know, uh, I think that's in the Book of Mormon. Pretty sure. I think yeah, it was. <laughs> so. I think it was in Mary J. Blige song or something. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in there. Luke, your laugh can cure cancer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great laugh. All right. Uh, do you have any more questions, Luke? Is that about it? Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, so I don't know if you guys saw the little title for the next thing for our trivia questions. Oh, I for- trivia! I forgot. I just got excited again. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we might go a little overtime, but we're gonna allow you guys because we love you guys so much. That means they weren't excited earlier. If they just got excited now. No. <laughs> this is what we're really in the moment we thought the interview was ending we were in the dumps but now we're back up top oh, yeah. I, got yeah. it, I got it alright so this is actually a joke from one of their videos we got some quick draw trivia yeehaw <laughs> alright so uh, All right. Morgan has some questions so I'm going to move the mic over to Morgan and That's she's right. going to start asking some alright we're going to do it in order we're going to do Aaron, Vinny and then Cooper oh wait like you're asking, oh shit. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, unless, uh, unless you want to do it like um, no, where no, you all no, just I jump in and we'll just give it. a point to whoever gets it. We can can do I that. just put a disclaimer out there that this might be really embarrassing? Some of the stuff <laughs> I might not know. Like, <laughs> these questions it's okay. are awful. No, okay. believe me. It, it's like, I'm telling you, it's the 1990s version of Trivial Pursuit. So. Yeah, and. Skip over any subject that's like math, like literature, history. Oh, don't worry. Anything I can don't do. worry. Yeah. We picked out some special questions <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Just the dude, fact that it's math, math, dude. Is the worst. It's, it's, any it's all math. kind of bizarre questions. So just be prepared found. for. If you don't know what okay. it is, just throw out your best guess, and whatever is closest will count. If it was Jeopardy, it'd be potpourri. Pretty much. So it's me then who? Then me then Coop. Okay. Well, you know, I kind of like the idea of you guys. All guessing wild and whoever gets it first. Guessing. Just wild mass. Yeah. Okay. And then wild we'll just guessing. give the point to whoever. Let's do it that Everybody way. Gets all right. It's going to get hectic. Prison rules. All right. <laughs> so first question. Who was the first U.S. president born in a hospital? George Bush Sr. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, uh, Adams. No. Uh, Roosevelt. Nope. Just keep guessing. Lincoln, uh, Garvey, Taft, no, Woodrow, <laughs> Herbert Hoover, <laughs> uh, Chester A. Arthur. Herbert Hoover was the closest no. so far. Oh, okay, Hoover. Um, I don't think it was. I don't think. Bill. Yes, it was. Uh, Ford. 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 No, no, not Ford. Which Roosevelt? Lyndon. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Oh, no, that's no. Still Theodore. Closest. Still Theodore. close. Still, still close. Carter. Carter. Yes, yeah, Carter. 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 Jimmy Carter. That was a Google. I, I sense a Google. You really didn't you? All right. Wait, who we'll got put, that one? We'll put that one to the side. We'll give all three of you guys that, that one. That's like a collective one. Aaron's girlfriend got that one. <laughs> so all three of you guys kind of got that one. <laughs> I'm all just right. surprised as to how many presidents we named. Wait, I thought this yeah. was 90s. That's why I said it's supposed <laughs> to be 90s. 1890s. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next question. What does Emily Post, she's like this um, etiquette lady, what does Emily Post say you do to your donut before dunking it? You feather your donut. <laughs> you, you lick your donut. <laughs> you rip it in half. Oh, there you go. You break it in half. Oh, chocolate. <laughs> All right. I was going to, no, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> All right. Next question. What color are Scallop's 35 eyes? Who? Blue. Co- yes, they are. They're blue. Oh, the that's Scallop has 35 right. eyes and they're blue. How did I do that shit? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did Cool Hand Luke go to jail for? Killing. Uh, <laughs> loitering. <laughs> nope. I've never seen that movie. Fuck me. Uh, uh, <laughs> he killed his dog. Uh, You're getting closer. It has to do with uh, did he, did he, uh, a failure. Killed, killed his wife. A, a failure to communicate. No. 
Is that a movie in itself? Yeah, no. Cool. It's, it's cool pretty out there. Yeah, I guess you could consider it a parking violation. <laughs> of sorts. Also pretty violent. He parked on top of another... Are you, oh, he parked on top of a dog. No. Close enough. All right. You give up? <laughs> yeah, we give up. Cutting the heads off parking meters. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. That'll <laughs> be another that. uh, collective point. Here we go. Let's see. You, what children's no, tale? Oh, wait. Sorry. Say something? What? No, you're good. Oh, all right. All right, here we go. What children's tale contains the line, Come, cinder slut, and hold the skine of wool for me. James and the Giant Peach. That, no. Ah. My go what, what is it like? Can you say it again, please? Pardon? Can you say the line again? Yes. Come, cinder slut, and hold the skine of wool for me. Cinderella? Cinderella yes, like, the original yes. Cinderella. Cinderella. Apparently. Damn. Had some slurs in there. Um, cinder slut. All right. <laughs> is it spelled C-U-M? Yeah, is it like cum like... <laughs> No. Unfortunately. Okay. Um, cinder slut. All right. All right. Who was the last of the Red Hot Mamas? The Red Hot Mamas, uh, man. Uh, oh, Kate last... Winslet. No. Uh, getting close. Yeah. J-Lo. Who are the Red Hot? Is it? Is it? What's the Red Hot Mamas? I, so like you know what? I don't even know. I just, just saw the question. The red thought it was great. Mamas were pretty funny, so <laughs> we asked. Uh, New rule: If you guys don't know the answer, you can't. Ask. <laughs> okay, okay. We just thought you guys were smarter it, than us. I'm just gonna get Lee. What? What was no, that? No, that's the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. It was uh, Sophie Tucker, but I guess Jennifer Lopez is. Is that what he said, Jennifer Lopez? Yeah, we said that once. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll for go. Go. That was the closest in uh, relation. It's true. All right. All right. Awesome. Next All question. Right. Who shot JR? Oh, I've gotten this question in a trivia night before. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if serious. Looker from the window. The milkman. <laughs> Always the milkman. <laughs> Afraid not. Uh, um, Jr. shot Jr. No, that would Dallas. Be quite a plot twist. Um, don't I don't know. Pass. Kristen Shepard. Whoever that could be. Got it. <laughs> All right. What color is Yak's milk? Yellow. Yellow. All right. It, Green. It's not the sweet yeah. lemonade. I swear. Keep going. Just guess every color, guys. Red. Brown. Burnt cyan. Black. <laughs> Robin's egg. Raw Luke. sienna. <laughs> Luke, you're not even in this. Cyan. It's red. Purple. I want to help. Purple's getting Orange. close. Pink. Red. Oh, yes, pink. 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 Aaron got a point. Pink. Dude, that's another one. Oh, All right. Dude, people have been kidding Who exclaimed time. "Holy Barracuda"? Uh, the, the fucking wait. <laughs> Wait, say it again. Who exclaimed, Holy Barracuda? John Belushi. Holy Barracuda. <laughs> Holy Barracuda. Holy Barracuda. I want... No. Um, when you said Barracuda, I was thinking of Legends of the Hidden Temple. And... <laughs> Just think, who usually says holy, insert word here? Oh, Robin! Yeah. Yes! Woo! Uh, Wait, who was that? Was that Vinny? I was going to say Harry Carey. Who, who... Leaping lumberjacks, Batman. Who got, who got that, that point? Was that Vinny? Vinny Gosh, golly, Vinny. Gee Willikers, zippity jippity doo, Batman. <laughs> mm. Was that verbatim? Wait, Vinny, did you get that one? Maybe. Yeah. All right. We're trying to keep tally. Look who's in the lead. All right. How many times a year does a penguin have sex? Once. Once. Yes. Woo, all you three of you. You guys all got that, so I'm going to just collect a point. Collect one. It's weird how right. we all knew this next question so fast. <laughs> Who is Howdy Doody's twin brother? Howdy Doody. Doody, howdy. No. Howdy, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> Getting closer. It's some kind of pun. <laughs> Rudy Tootie? No. Oh, no. Tootie Fruity. What was the? What was Howdy Doody from? What was that from? He was like a, a Howdy Doody Howdy Doody show. No, with cinnamon. <laughs> um, I don't know. Starring his twin brother Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> it does start with the D, actually. Um, di diddly dun dipstein, diddly doodly. He might serve multiple purposes. Doodle. Dildo. <laughs> Dilding dupstick. <laughs> Dippy long, Dippy long, yes, yes. Do you guys right. give up yet? 
<laughs> David, yeah, right. David Chester. You just go easy. No. Double, <laughs> Double duty. Double duty. Oh, uh, okay. It's okay. Here's another one, guys. What was Howdy Doody's sister's name? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm glad you brought this one up because that's obviously female duty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it's Howdy du- Doody. Hannah Doody. Double oh, duty. you're getting close. Hannah it's Doody's like close. A name at the beginning. Um, Henrietta Ooh. Doody. No. No, getting still along the lines uh, of it. Harriet the Spy. Helga uh, Doody. It's like yeah, it's like H Doody. H. <laughs> Uh, uh, hey. Haley Duty. No. Oh, oh. Uh, it kind of sounds like Howdy. Yeah, it kind of sounds like Howdy. Yeah, kind of sounds like Howdy. Yeah. Howie. Henrietta Duty. <laughs> no, I already said that. Oh, all right. Just let us know when you give up. Holly, Holly Duty. No. Holly, no. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Surrender. All right, it's Heidi Duty. Heidi Duty. Oh, these questions are too hard, guys. They're ridiculous. Yeah. What competition did Nan Rob in 1969? Oh wait, wait what competition did Nan Rob win in 1969 with her Onion Lovers Twist? What the oh, was it a, 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 a Betty Crocker cooking so competition? Not Betty Crocker. So close. Uh, Chef, uh, Chef, Chef Hardy. Hardy. No. <laughs> 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 I thought you were gonna say Jeff Goldblum. Je- okay, wait. Here's my hint. Hoo hoo. Pillsbury. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pillsbury Big Off. All right, who got that first? I, I thought it was Disney. So, did someone get that first or all three? What's that? Did someone get that first or all three? Who got it? All right, we'll give it to him. All right. What's the best time of day to buy a pair of shoes? Three o'clock. Ooh. I think that was what? Sh- uh, shoe 30. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a better answer, actually. Um, at closing time. I think we should, uh, I think we should give Vinny it because we he, should. he was like right on the mark. The late afternoon. Well, around the mark. Uh. Late afternoon. I don't understand. And it doesn't that even question. give an explanation. It's Unless just that's late like afternoon. From a song or something. These sound more like opinions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are. So I'll right. give that to Vinny. Some bubbling Jeez, millionaire back terrible. in the day. Yeah. All right, which is more tender, the left or the right leg of a chicken? The well, left leg. Right. Oh. The left leg. Left leg. Oh, Cooper got oh it. I guess Cooper and I get that because Vinny went back his answer and said right. Why did Birdie yeah. go bye-bye? Because, uh, oh, well, no. Cause he's someone a shot him. Deserter. No. Someone took Petey's head off. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Wait, what was? Wait, it was a war. He had to go to war. Oh, yeah, oh, he was yeah, drafted. He was drafted. Yep. Then he got the. Dang. Jeez. That's horrible. No, actually, but... All right. This one all has the same answer. These three questions have the same answer. What's the largest U.S. city on the Great Lakes? What did Frank Sinatra call my time, my kind of town? Chicago. And, yep. Oh. There we go. Where's the 1968 Democratic National Convention? Chicago. Oh. Got that just for you guys. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and. What organ gave us the word hysterical? The funny bone. Isn't I that wish. an organ? You would, you would think that, right? The kidney? You did say an organ. Yeah. An organ. The kidney. Nope. Liver. Nope. Lung, bladder. <laughs> that would be better. Getting closer. The brain. <laughs> She's technically right. <laughs> <laughs> the crane. It's, uh, let's say... The bladder was the closest answer so far. There's only one person... Colon. There's only one person in the room with you who has this. I'm the organ. Ovaries. Getting close. Getting really close. Vagina. <laughs> no. A little farther. Fallopian tubes. Uh, really? Right on the... Uh. In there. Ah, get really the in womb. there. Yes, yes. The yes. uterus. Uterus. I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are the names of the... All right, guys. Female genitalia, I don't know. <laughs> this is gonna pussy. get a uh, Never seen my explicit right. tag on iTunes. Yeah. It's just pussy. Right. Very good. They ain't not out. My Freddy Krueger glove broke, and I'm sad. Oh, uh, <laughs> look! You just <laughs> bought that the other day. I have a Freddy Krueger glove. Too. It's probably better than mine. It's, it's tested the the times of my life. I've used it many a time. <laughs> 
All right. And it's still around. It always comes in handy, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, I see what you did there. We <laughs> <All laughs> <right. laughs> <laughs> two more questions. All right. Just All right. give me the point. Okay. <laughs> oh. Aaron, it's, you're it's between. I'm sorry. Okay, the last one will be worth like 50 points. So. Oh, fair. First fair of all, enough. this one. Who appeared in more than 30 Alfred Hitchcock films? Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, oh. Yep. All right, so cool. Vinnie and Cooper are tied. But this last one will be 50 points so that <laughs> well, you Aaron know. can win. You answer that question. That was just me. <laughs> all right. Which move faster, yeah. frogs or toads? <laughs> toads. Toads. Frogs. Who said frogs? Me, Vinny. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Vinny wins. Vinny wins. Oh, okay. Here's the I'd like to point out, <laughs> making making that last question 50 points just kind of renders the entire thing pointless. Exactly. No, there was a lot of points. Sure. It wasn't pointless. Because I was going to make a oh, comeback right wow. there. So how much did I win by? How much right. more? Well, uh, 56 by, points. Like, yeah, well, you had 56. Cooper had 6. Aaron had 1. Yeah, Aaron. But what? I had collectively, you had three. Oh, maybe you had two. I'm sorry. Did I? <laughs> what kind of game rigging is going on here? I've learned Collective this, guys. points, though, Place you had here. like uh, five. So slow clap oh. for Aaron. I'll give you a few extra. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let me pull this closer to me. I'm gonna close this podcast out. Close this podcast out. Close this podcast out. I learned out. a lot of new shit today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we want to thank our uh, more than gracious guests, F and D Films, for coming on with us. And uh, oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank it was you. Awesome. Oh yeah, no problem. We were freaking out when you actually you know emailed us back. So uh, Connor was. Yeah. Okay. Just don't forget, we're now syndicated on iTunes. You can check us out at ML Podcasting. Uh, just search us on iTunes Store and you'll find us. Make sure you don't put an ML podcast because it'll come up with some other weird podcast that you don't want to listen to. <laughs> okay, and then um, we're also we also have our new domain uh, ml-podcasting.com. And also make sure to check out F and D Films because these guys are great. They have you know plenty of content to check out. They have dailies and they have. Uh, films both are hilarious you should check them out if you guys want to say anything to the viewers uh, feel free to say anything plug something in or whatever hey what's up how are you, how are you? How are you? how's everyone doing everybody have a great day and um, remember drink your milk <laughs> <laughs> oh, your yak's geez. milk uh, thanks so much guys thanks for hanging out and listening to our boring conversation yeah. on our side not yours and uh, keep, keep in mind that punching will be coming out in the springtime roughly so keep your eyes yeah. out for that all right sounds good okay now we have a special request because every time we end our podcast we like to end it with some sort of song so we we're wondering if cooper would do the honor of maybe singing us out <laughs> oh man yeah oh. Coop. tall order okay cool <laughs> and uh you can sing whatever you want so just go for it yeah. No. Yeah. Do you guys have a style? Uh. What, well, Luke? How about you come up with something? You're pretty good with this kind of stuff. Polka. Polka. <laughs> Rap polka. <laughs> well, we're just gonna go with it, I guess. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> thanks for having us. It's definitely feels. Do do do, and we're coming, and we're having some thrills. Do do do, we're hanging out with ML podcast. It went by really, really, really way too fast. We love you guys. We hope you love us back. We love you guys. We love you guys. We love you guys. And we podcast for life. <laughs>